Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Again, this is Brian Mann with Morpheus, and we appreciate your time today. So I'm going to kick things off with just a couple of slides here. Um, I also have Adam Yaws with me. He's our Director of Pre-Sales Engineering. Um, and we are going to talk to you about how to provision 1,000 VMs during your coffee break. So, so first, let's ask the question. Why do you need to provision 1,000 VMs in the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee? Well, the real answer is that in most cases, you probably don't. But you do need to be able to respond to the needs of the business, and you need to be able to do it very quickly. Oh, let's get these slides moving here. Oh, there we go. So why do we need to do it so quickly? Well, according to the 2015 State of DevOps report, where we pulled this quote, IT performance provides real value. <coughs> Look, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if IT departments can move faster and with less errors, they'll provide better service to the business. So in this quick demo, we'll take a look at how we can speed up the deployment of applications, as well as the deployment of virtual machines and other infrastructure resources. We're going to help your team become high performers. So why do you want to be a high performer, right? Here are a few stats from the State of DevOps 2016 report that should convince you why. So 30 times more frequent deployments, 60 times less failure, 50% um, higher business growth, and less than one hour mean recovery time. So really, who wouldn't want to be part of this kind of change in their organization? So we're going to have Adam show you uh, the self-service portal and how our provisioning workflow can allow you to deliver resources to the development teams and give the development teams the ability to deploy applications in the blink of an eye. So why do I want to be a high performer part two? <clears throat> so on the infrastructure side, we're seeing folks who have a 7% increase in revenue, a 9% increase in profit, uh, as well as a 9% increase in share price. Again, these are all excellent statistics. These are all things that we want to see every organization be able to, um, to brag about. All right, so hopefully at this point I've convinced you, right? You want to be part of a high-performing team. So let me tell you a little bit more about Morpheus. So Morpheus is a cloud management platform that features a self-service provision portal that will allow you to spin up many different applications and integrates with a wide variety of on-prem and cloud-based infrastructure resources so you can provision any app in any database anywhere. So I'm going to have Adam Yaw step in now. He's our director of pre-sales engineering, as I said. And he's going to show you how you can use Morpheus to provision thousands of virtual machines with a few clicks of a mouse, provision applications in a, in a flash, and turn your teams into high performers uh, all in your coffee break. Thank you. All right, thanks for that, Brian. Switch over here and get out of PowerPoint. <clears throat> All right, so uh, one thing I want to point out about Morpheus before we get going too far <clears throat> is Morpheus is a full HTML5, just web based application. Uh, you can run it anywhere you want. If you want to run it in a cloud provider, run it in a cloud provider. If you want to run it on-prem in your environment, run it on-prem in your environment. Uh, it's really easy to get set up and going. I've done full POCs for multiple customers in you know, just a couple of hours. Uh, so quite easy to get going. Uh, right now, so I'm, I'm looking at the dashboard within Morpheus. So right now I can see a little bit of information about my environment. I've got 16 instances running. I don't have any open monitoring incidents. I don't, uh, I've got some log errors here. Log errors, you know, things we're collecting from all the different instances we've provided or provisioned. Uh, everything from Windows to Linux to database logs, everything uh, rolled directly up into an Elasticsearch database. Um, we're also controlling our internal backups and an integration with several different internal backup providers. So we've got that going as well. What we'll do today is instead of going all the way through the infrastructure bit and talking about what we connect to and all those different cloud providers, <clears throat> I'm going to connect. I'm going to go and actually provision a few different things. So I'll click on the provisioning tab, and I can see that I've got a bunch of different instances up and going. I've got everything from standard Ubuntu boxes. I've got database servers, Windows boxes, uh, Microsoft SQL, more Tomcat, 
Nginx, just a bunch of stuff out here running in my environment. Now I can go provision instances onesie twosie by going through this you know, built-in self-service catalog. So I've got a bunch of different instances ty instance type here. Uh, I can provision standard virtual images, anything from Hyper-V to VMware type in images, uh, Memo, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Magento, Memcached, Mongo databases, and so on. But if I want to do something like a templatized app that's uh, multi-tiered, can click on apps here, and very simply go add app. So I'll pick a group to put it in. In this case, I'm going to put it in a DevOps group. The DevOps group uh, in our configuration or demo environment has a lot of different clouds in it. I'll give it a name. And now what I can do is just select one of my uh, custom provisioning templates. I can do this uh, multi-tier environment we've got here. Uh, I could do maybe a logarithm type template. I could do a Tomcat and MySQL server template, which is what we're going to do here. So you can see that we've got a couple of different uh, apps up and going. Sorry for the email, guys. I thought I killed that. So in this case, I'm going to go provision a new application that's a Tomcat and MySQL server. So I'll pick that up, hit Next. I'm going to say, in this case, I'm going to do it in Docker. Uh, I've got a lot of different options. I can do it in SoftLayer. I can do it in AWS. I can do it on our labs, uh, Nutanix, uh, out in Google, OpenStack, Azure, you name it. In this case, I'm going to do a little MySQL instance here on Docker. Give it a name. And I'll do a Docker single master do a lot of different things with MySQL there. I'll give it a gig of RAM and 10 gigs of storage and some credentials. Okay. Collapse that bit. And we'll do Tomcat as well. We'll do Docker here. Again, Tomcat. I'll just do Tomcat 7 for this. So Docker Tomcat. I'll give it 1 gig of RAM and 10 gigs of storage again. I'll just hit complete. Now, it takes just a moment to get that spinning. So I've got this new app provided here, and it's, it's in the process of provisioning. So what it'll do, we'll click into the name here, and we'll go provision a MySQL instance and a Tomcat instance here directly. So it takes just a moment to get these up and going, but while we're doing that, I can point out a couple of different things. Since I have this package together as an application, out of the box, we're automatically setting up monitoring here. So this is brand new going. Uh, we're also tracking all the logging information as well as environment variables. So within this application, you can see that we're tracking our MySQL configuration information as well as our Tomcat configuration information. So this makes things really nice. So like say in my uh, Catalina configuration files, I can just reference these environment variables instead of the actual IP address, host name, ports and such. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when I move bits of my environment around the world or to different cloud providers, this is all automatically updated by Morpheus and, um, and can make things really portable and really easy to move around. So in this case, I'll also add a new one, and we'll go create a database here in just a minute. I'll add that environment variable and save it. Let's see if these guys are up and going yet. Yep, they're both up and running. Since I've applied that environment variable, I'm going to go restart my Tomcat instance here. Now what I'm going to do in this case is we'll go get the IP address and port number from this MySQL server that's up and going now, and we'll go connect to it and deploy a database. Enter SQL Pro to do that. Little Mac SQL app. Connect right to the database server I set up. I'll add a new database, give it uh, the name of Spud. And then I'll go import a little database dump to actually populate it. And this is just MySQL, pretty simple stuff. So that's off and going. I'll switch back to my um, app here. We'll go take a little closer look at the Tomcat side. Now we can see that we've already finished importing that addition, that uh, SQL dump into the database, so we're up and going. Database should be ready to go. <clears throat> now we've added environment variables. I can see them at this level as well. And I've got a database name, 
Uh, I've got my Tomcat information. I can go do a code deployment right on this and go deploy a website. So you'll see we've got this deployments tab up here. I can go define reusable deployments in Morpheus. So I can use it as a way to track versions. I can use it as a way to you know, make, make things very simple and very reusable. Since I'm doing this deployment on Tomcat, it's going to ask me if I need any Catalina options. I do. I spell it right. Uh, you can see in this case we're going to go deploy a WAR file of 73 megs uh, directly onto this Tomcat server. A few different things I can do. I can do a file-based deployment. I can do a fetch-based deployment. Or if I'm uh, deploying code, I can tie it directly into GitHub or anybody who's got like a Git-like repository or Git-like API. So next and complete there. We'll see that's deploying. Now, uh, one another thing I want to point out about Morpheus is no matter what hypervisor you're running, if you're running Docker, if you're running AWS, uh, VMware, I've got console access built in directly through um, through the UI here type ENV and I can see things like you know, uh, here's that database name that I added a little bit earlier. Uh, so I can interact with it directly through this HTML5 console. Uh, nothing uh, needed to be installed really around the Java world. So I don't have to deal with that. I can pop it out into another browser. Uh, keep in mind that since this is Docker, I'm <coughs> excuse me, pop directly into that Docker container. If it were a uh, VM or something like that or an instance out on AWS, I'm uh, connecting directly to possibly the um, the RDP engine on um, AWS or to the VMware Hypervisor Console service uh, opened up by GDB server. So a lot to be done there. Uh, so my instance is up and running and I think my deployment is done so I should have a website up and going now. So all of that including all of my talking took me about, I don't know, four minutes to get this uh, get a Tomcat server built, a MySQL server built, I populated a database, I created environment variables and I deployed a website and now we're up and going. I've got uh, this little CMS site that you can just go play with. It's actually uh, part of what backends our production uh, website as well as a little bit of Morpheus. Now, so that's going. Uh, a couple things that, uh, that we can point out here. So we've, we've done the standard orchestration and provisioning, and I can do things here like scale out into additional clouds. Um, I can add a load balancer in here directly. Uh, if I'm in uh, AWS, <coughs> um, I can go provision ELBs on demand. In this case, I'm just going to do a standard uh, little internal load balancer, which is based upon HA proxy. What I'll do is I'll go create a load balancer and put that right in front of my application. Take just a moment to do that. So now I've got a web balancer provision and I've got my uh, Tomcat environment added there. Now let's talk about auto scaling and manual scaling. We can manually scale uh, vertically, of course, by going actions and then resize. I can pick a different storage plans, a plan. Of course, I can make these customizable. So if you want to go select exactly how many megabytes or gigabytes of RAM, how much storage, how many CPUs, you can do that. In this case, uh, I would just pick something like 2 gig and 20 gig, you can see my uh, storage volume bit is going to change, then I hit resize to resize that instance. Um, <clears throat> it'll do that immediately, so if it's something that needs to be rebooted, it'll say I'm going to restart this. Do you want to restart this instance now? Yes or no. Uh, otherwise, if it's a container, we resize it immediately. Um, if it's a virtual machine that supports hot add, then we'll go add the resources to it as well. So it really kind of depends there whether or not we'll have to do the restart. Um, but you should be able to do most of that kind of stuff non-disruptively if you're using modern OSs and such. Um, we can also scale horizontally manually. If I want to go add Tomcat node into the actions menu here, I can choose what cloud I'm going to put it in. In this case, I'll do Docker, just put it right next to the existing one, hit execute, and you'll see it go and spin up another container here. So I've got one that's online and one that's offline. Last little bit of scaling, and then we'll wrap it up and open it up for questions. Auto scaling. So I can, of course, automatically upscale and automatically downscale, set a minimum or a maximum, and look at the instances themselves. How much CPU, RAM, and disk have I got, and how much, uh, what are the thresholds at which I should be scaling? Alongside that is schedule based scaling. I've got some retail customers who really like this. They know <coughs> how busy they're going to be on, on a certain point in time and then they'll automatically upscale or set more aggressive scaling thresholds um, for that point in time. 
So that's it. So we've got uh, we've got some scaling done. We've manually scaled. We've automatically scaled. We've talked about resizing instances. I uh, showed you how quickly we can provision a full multi-tiered application. Um, well, I think we can open it up for questions now. What we'll do is I'll pop that open. If you'd like to uh, request a demo, you can go to our website, morpheusdata.com, and you can actually go to uh, click right there on the demo button, or you can go to slash demo, fill out a form, and uh, myself or one of my colleagues will get back to you to get a, a, a demo going. Usually we'll respond within you know, five, ten minutes to get that scheduled. All right. Have you got any questions so far? Ah, <clears throat> what about bare metal? So we also do, in addition to con um, in addition to container access, in addition to <coughs> excuse me, virtual machines or cloud providers, we can also orchestrate solutions on bare metal, and that's really any type of bare metal. So if you've got HP out there, Dell out there, uh, we can do that. We can you can do a couple of different things. Interestingly, with bare metal, where you can go Pixie boot from Morpheus directly and install uh, an operating system and uh, manage that. If you're running Cisco UCS, we've got Cisco UCS integrations where you can go apply a service profile, Pixie boot directly from Morpheus, and, and get about as close as to a single touch provisioning as I've ever seen. Any other questions out there? All right. Well, at that point, pretty quick demo, quick, pretty quick webinar. Uh, Please feel free to hit us up on morpheusdata.com slash demo or uh, follow us on Twitter at Morpheus Data. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Have a great day.